drive the old stuff. And I tell you, I, I told some friends last week, I said, yeah, you get out in an old car. And I've said this a hundred times. I'll say it a hundred more. When I shift second gear on my car on Sunrise Highway, 30 years literally just flies off my shoulders. It, it, it flies off almost as long as my hair used to be. <laughs> I was going to say, some of the hair goes, too. I yeah, know with, uh, with me that's what happens. Right. <laughs> that, that's like I was telling I was telling Joe the other, uh, the other night about my uh, my 67 Chevelle. You know, oh, yeah. on March 22nd, I'll own it for 45 years, you know. Okay. Oh, on, yeah. So you jump in there, and I'm 16 again. You know what I'm saying? Isn't that great? You know, that's like me. I've owned my car since 1975, which is 40, how many years? 43? Yeah, yeah you're 43 with your GTL, yeah. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. that just means we're too stubborn to get rid of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Let's yeah. face it. When, you, when you're in this hobby, when you're in the car thing, you know, you, you become a hoarder. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there's stuff piled up behind my car. You know what I mean? We, we all have stuff, whether it's tools, whether it's parts. It's like, you know, I might need this clip again someday. Right. You know, but it fit. But if it's a 58, yeah, we need it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you never yeah. know what you're going to come across. Yeah, you know? That's like me moving the same stuff how many times from, from yeah, that's when true. I started in my mother's house. To one shop, to another shop, the next shop, and now the garage. Yeah. Am I ever going to use some of the stuff? Oh, heck no. <laughs> no, I know. We well, all go through the same thing. Yeah. Well, Doug, we got to get you in here one day into the studio and sit with us and, and kind of do this yeah, face to face. I think you'll have a good time. Yeah, you got yeah no, we, we, we wanted to come down, but you guys are off next week, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. It. Uh,. We'll now, maybe the following week, then we'll work something out. Johnny, I come down. Oh Absolutely. yeah, yeah. You got you got to bring wrench. Yeah, you got to yeah. bring wrench. Definitely dartboard and wrench. That sounds like it's like a nineteen seventies. Oh, hold show. on, I'll put the wrench on for a minute. Sounds All right. good. Hold on, I know you guys got to run. Hold on. Okay. All right. Take care, guys. Good talk. Okay, Doug. All right, we're Hello, Joe. Johnny. Johnny, boy, what's happening? How what's you doing, happening? man? Oh, good, good. It's good to hear from you on the on the phone. Uh, you, so you you listening to the show? Yeah. Yeah, so Yeah, I'm ready to come on. All right, we'll get if you I like can. To... Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. definitely. No, you And behave like a little boy. Yeah, we just got a few <laughs> short rules. You got to watch what you say and all of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, let, let's face it. You know, you know not the... a problem. Um, uh, let's, let's... How's everything. Good, good, good. So far uh so far we're trying to be you know get some stuff out there. You know, we talked about some aftermarket stuff. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh the disc brakes on the uh, on the on the blue Ford there a little bit. Yeah, you know sure. I mean about stuff not fitting right and you know, it's a good yeah, thing yeah. it's a good thing we have you around. <laughs> well, you, know? you got you know, you have to finesse it, you know, you got to uh look at it, put it together, take it apart a few times, then you put it back together and then there it is. There's the show, you know. That's gotta... it. Good time. I like the way you put that, Johnny, cuz that's what we all do. We all like I worked on a power steer pump yesterday on, on a Camaro, and I, I had it on and off three different times, and then I actually had a file fit. It had a stupid billet pulley on it that was in stock, and I met there with a rat tail file. I'm like, I'll make you fit. Don't worry. You're going to go on whether you want to or not. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have vase to make you fit. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen got, John do that any number of times. If you got to yeah. bore it out, you got to bore it out. You know, you know yes. you're not going to mess it up. If you, if no. you got the eye for that and uh, right. how to do it and make it, or, you know. I even took a very small file, and I actually worked uh -huh. in the keyword way to kind of clearance that keyway sure. a little bit. Yeah. So, right, 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 right. But uh, there you go. Yeah, we make it fit. So yeah, listen, we're gonna yeah. get you guys in. We'll have some fun in a couple oh, of weeks. Heck yeah, definitely. Yeah, my my uh my father was a machinist, you know, so I we you know learned I, when I couldn't do it, just hand it to him and he'd go to work. Give me that stupid thing. You don't know what you're doing. Best job <laughs> I ever had stuff in freezes and you yeah. know for heads and studs and shit like that, you know. That, the best job I ever had and I say everybody should do it. All right Johnny, we you gotta know, run, we gotta take hey. a break and do more fundraising. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, right. man. All right, All right thanks, guys. Thanks great great so, talking to you, man. Talk you to too. you soon. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, that was the... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Wrench. The weekly report from the UD. So, like I said, Joe, we will... You can give us a call, 516-572-7440. Or the other number, Joe, which is... 516-572-7438. Come on, people, pony up. And you can... They're making us look bad. Yep. You, well, actually, we just got a donation. We got a donation on the website as we were speaking. Yes, We yes. got one uh, from a listener who's uh, clocked in on the website, so we did get one as we were talking. Yeah. And you remember our mission? It's educational. We do provide professional broadcast training to qualified NCC students, and and the hope is that if we raise enough money, they can give training to us. Yes, so because, that we can maybe become better broadcasters. Sure, I, I want to know what all them slidey things do on the board there. That, that's you know, the transporter so beam. That's all you got. When we push that, we leave. Oh. So, 
<laughs> okay, good. I, I like that one. Yeah, I know. So with that, we're going to take a break because I need to reset after that last call. Oh, yes. <laughs> so let's let's do that. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back with more Motormouth Radio in a second. Keep it where you got it. Wow, that's like crazy loud music. What are you listening to? The best music on the radio. Come on, this is the Iron Age. The what age? The Iron Age, the show that brings you various types of heavy metal music from all over the spectrum. Really? I've never heard of it. How do you know so much about it? I'm the host. Wait, if you're the host, how are you driving this car and on the radio at the same time? Come on, don't ask so many questions. The Iron Age with me, Justin Sullivan, delivers the best variety of heavy metal music that you could ever ask for. Only on the Iron Age will you find music as ridiculously heavy as Meshuggah and Oceana along with chill and relaxing tunes like Tool and Deftones. Well, that sounds cool and all, but I think I'm just going to listen to something else. Ooh, I think that's going to be a problem. I think you're going to have to find another ride then. What? See, this this is high fi okay? High fidelity. You know what that means? That means this is the highest quality fidelity. High five. Those are two very important things to have in the stereo system. Join me, Kim Tracy, on High Fidelity for a mix of music with a focus on newer music and lesser known artists every Monday, I mean every Tuesday, I mean every Thursday at 2 p.m. on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC and streaming with the iHeartRadio and TuneIn apps. Thanks for listening to 90.3 WHPC. We value you as a listener, and we know you value us as a radio station that gives you music and programming you simply can't hear anywhere else. Consider making a gift to support the non-profit, non-commercial, educational radio at the voice of Nassau Community College. Running a radio station can be expensive, and your one-time tax-deductible donation will help our students learn the latest technology, which in turn allows them to have an edge over everyone else trying to get a job in the media industry. Your favorite shows will be holding their once-a-year annual fundraising marathons this month. Your gift, put together with those from your friends and neighbors, adds up to what we need to make WHPC a great radio station. WHPC, helping people communicate. More details at ncc.edu slash WHPC. All right, we don't have a cherry coupe in the studio, and we don't even have a cherry soda in the studio. And we do have the Beach Boys, not in mono, as Vince wanted to know. No, we're going, we're kicking it modern style in stereo. That's the way we like our Beach Boys. And I know Vince is a bit of a purist, but I don't have any Frank Zappi either, so we can't play that. On Motormouth Radio, Long Island's only automotive radio talk show where we cover all the hard subjects. And uh, the hard subject is, when will Joe come back? Because he stepped out. I don't know if he's in the transporter beam if, or if he went out to, uh, to let Pirate Paul in, who's coming down to see us. I don't know. But uh, here he is. He is back. The transporter beam did reactivate, and Joe is now. I was just outside with the tambourine. <laughs> Nobody gave they, You know, I, I got a couple of dead mice. You Take know, the white like robes that. off, though. The Harry, the, the Harry Christian stuff doesn't really fit yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> yeah. It's cold out there. I got, I got, I'm coming back here, and we'll just ask for money nice verbally, you know? You know, I want to say something about that, because this is our fundraising thing. We only do it once a year. And, and the thing that impresses me the most about something like this, Joe, you and I are self-taught. We've, we have no formal training in this. Right. Our, our grandfather, Chris. Hard Knox University. Yeah, the Swizz himself was a classically trained radio jock who kind of rubbed off on me. Um, I tried to take the good stuff, right. but um, the thing that gets me then is... you had to take that to the dry cleaners. I do, well, it's every week. <laughs> like your son, who was came to the station, there's a bunch of younger people now who are doing shows mostly in the... Well, throughout the day on WHPC. They just went to a competition. There was a competition, and I'm trying to see what the name of it is here, and I don't happen to see it, but they won... The, the station took a bunch of trophies that are yeah, outside. Yeah, they won an award. Yeah, I got that, I got that email. That, that's very uh, pride-inducing yeah. there. Eight awards. Best overall on-air schedule, best sports update, best training manual, which is pretty cool. And there were five others. Best community college radio station, best faculty advisor, best newscaster, which is Zach Terkel and John Gallo, best liner and sweeper, which wasn't us. It was, again, a couple students, Mindy Felveson. No, no, I used the mop. Yeah, right, Did they, have mop, they didn't have mop in there this time. No, no, no. Damn. And the producer of that was Jeanneau Jordain, which uh, I've heard that. It's a great spot.
spot and the best website from for American Hit Radio, no which are community volunteers like us. That's Heidi and Tom Morales. So. Again, if you want to force the stuff like that, that's our program director, station manager who gets involved like that. He was the force behind that. We have a we all owe Sean a big debt of gratitude because he he brought his heart and soul here, and he definitely tries to get it down to the um, you know to the guys who are learning, which is which is a- absolutely yeah. Excellent. He puts in a lot of effort with that. He really does. And and that's the thing, you know, it, it's a payback thing. We definitely have. Um, you know, when we have a guy like that who sits in the, you know, sits in the office, doesn't just push papers around, but he actually, you He's know, involved. We'll get involved. He's involved, yeah. I'll tell you how else we get involved. I'm going to hand this to Joe, because it's our favorite topic, burgers. Joe, re- tell people what they get, what oh, the, yeah. the prizes they can get if they oh, choose I'm, to I'm donate. I'm going to my pocket right now. If you make a $25 donation, we will thank you with a gift card valid for two burgers mm. or sandwiches from Elevation Burger, located at 437 South Oyster Bay Road in the Woodbury Plaza in Plainview. All right? So Absolutely. that means if you come, come, up with, come up with 25 bucks, we'll come up with the burgers. All right, and you can find uh, more information on this on on the uh, Elevation Burger website. Actually, I don't know Facebook or Instagram. Sounds good to me. Yeah, not even a website. You can just go good old Facebook, good old Instagram. Instagram's like a menu on your phone. Isn't it great? For no matter what you're looking at. And I, I haven't really bought into Instagram myself yet, but I will be because you know, on Motormouth Radio, we became Twitter files. We You can get us at Motormouth Radio if you want to look on Twitter. Right, yeah. Uh, but Instagram, Some I think. Some of us are twittier than others. Yeah. Insta- Instagram will be the next. And of course, we are on the web, motormouthradio.com. And, and Facebook. And Facebook. Your faccio brut, if you want to go and check the <laughs> Italian version that Would we. You- <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah let's, let's face it. The uh, Facebook these days is more for the, us older folks. Yeah. That's what they say. Instagram, fa- Snapchat, and all yeah. that other stuff, which I don't know. I can't even work half that stuff because my, I got fat fingers on my phone there. I, could, I have um, I have pens that actually have rubber little things that are actually. Yeah, that, yeah. I got that, some. I get them for my scan tools. I, yeah, but, I use you know, those. Yeah. I, I, the only problem is, is that usually if I try to do that stuff while I'm walking. Oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. I usually end up you almost put your put eye my out. out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the, you know they don't really like me having sharp objects, yeah. which is one reason why I went into it and into the uh, diagnostic end of things. I mean, it's yeah. just the it's just the wire probes and stuff, which you really can't do too much damage. Speaking of diagnostics, to go back to some car stuff, I was talking with Mike yesterday about the Chevelle that he has that I'm uh, putting back together for him. I'm doing my part of it. Other guys have done some other stuff, and uh, the engine is going to be my thing to get it started and what i did is took the um vicks uh, our, our friend joe who we know through vic dropped me off an old hei distributor right and i took the cam gear off of it because you want that off you just want to spin the oil pump right and i took all the stuff off the top and i welded a big seven eighths inch nut to the top of the distributor no joke so i could put a socket on it and spin mm-hmm. this and the question was i told mike that every engine i ever built and and everything i ever read professed that you had to you know to pack the oil pump with vaseline yeah so that it would suck oil right away and not have a cavitation or, or dry spot. Right, you want to eliminate the air, yeah, and with some type of gelatinous substance over there. And I always had great luck with that. Now, this car hasn't been packed, and now Mike told me every car he ever worked on where he put an oil pump in, he never did that, and the car always ran fine. So, again, we're at two schools of thoughts, and I said, okay, you know, it's kind of funny because we, you know, when you talk with other car guys... No one knows what everybody else knows, and that's why we hang out, because you know what I don't know, and you know, yeah, Dougie you and Johnny, learn, they learn certainly... from each other, yeah. Yeah, they got stuff that we don't know, and, and maybe we teach them where to get a good, good burger or something like that. Right, so, right. Let's, fa- let's face it, when it comes to that, you, everybody, you know, there's so many aspects, there's so many angles to the, car, to the car hobby, the car trade, that we've all seen something a little bit different. We have a lot of common ground, but then again, we all have slightly different ways of doing things based on mm-hmm. the kind of cars. What you what, what your tool arsenal is like, right? And uh, and if you go to the Blue Bay Diner, you can get a really really good burger. Yeah, let's face it. I'll that, tell you that. Yeah, you don't even have to do it with the engine drive. Either. No, you don't. Nope. So um, where I was going with this is, you know, you also respect each other. So where Mike respected my uh, talk about you know packing the pump. I, and I could see by the look in his face, it was like, okay. And, but I, I respect him. Like, I know you did that and it worked because I know plenty of guys in shops threw oil pumps in cars, never took them apart and packed them. Right. So I know that that works. But sure. the thing is, still, my training tells me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know Am what I is? dropping a pan? You know what it is, too? When it comes to stuff like that, it, you, you got to respect the guy who's done things a certain way, which 
I'm not going to call it a cor- cutting a corner. You know what I mean? But exactly. It, but all but what happens is this guy's got ten cars. 